up and running and we'll confirm that. Let me just double check here. And we are live. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today is trending Thursday and you may see there's only one sister here today. And I do apologize, Carol Sue was unable to make it, but I know that she wishes everyone well. And on this trending Thursday, we have an amazing, amazing guest. And I just wanna introduce myself. My name is Janice, AKA Wellness Diva 4.0. And we have such an amazing guest. And when Helena and my sister and I had our pre-podcast interview, we were immediately drawn to her happy, intuitive energy. So I would like to introduce her, obviously, Elina Bazrak. And welcome to the Two Sisters podcast today. Yeah, thank you. I'm really happy to be here because it was really a pleasure also to chat with you the first time. Wonderful, wonderful. So I just want to give our folks a little background. Um, you are an intuitive parenting coach and you guide moms of young children calm the chaos in their home and in their head through Montessori and inner work. And I can't wait to dive into all that because obviously with the, with the COVID um, and everything that has happened this past year, I'm sure that so many moms and parents in general too, we don't want to forget the dads and any other individuals that act on behalf as a parent. But I love what you said in your bio that this means removing clutter and putting in place systems for a more harmonious living while creating a transformation where different, diff, deeper needs are met as well. So I would love to turn it over to you and, and really find out from you what made you want to be an intuitive parenting coach? Well, I think it's often as, as a lot of coaches do and start their own uh, journey struggling. And um, I, at the time, didn't know there were anything such as a parenting coach. And the only thing that I was seeing was, um, you know, sleep consultants. And it was very harsh. Most of the things that I've seen, it was all about sleep training and, and it wasn't very holistic and whole. Um, and so... I, I really struggled a lot with my son because he had eczema and so he really was waking up a lot. And so that made me dive, dive into so many different, um, different ways to parent because it's definitely trigger things inside of me. And I went on a quest to make, uh, to find solutions to make our lives better. And, and so through all this, through all these roller coasters, I was able to find, um, to dabble into Montessori and actually get a, um, a little certification as an assistant. Um, and that really just was such an inspiration. And that's why I talk about systems to put in place because it, they're easy, they're really easy systems. And often people think of Montessori as this really expensive education uh, and school, whereas you can definitely uh, implement Montessori and you don't have to be hardcore Montessori at home because it's just about, you know, um, guiding the child to do things on his own and really letting the child experiment. And just like a lot of easy step to do at home. So it's not expensive and it actually helps so much the child and the parents because uh, there's more harmony at home for the parents, but also for the child who can develop more easily. And then on, on top of that, my own experience of just digging, digging and digging much deeper into releasing those older blockages and patterns that, that really come up really strongly after we have a child because they really come and push those little buttons. Um, so doing all this for me was very transformational uh, to a point where I pretty much cannot really like see myself as the same person as I was um, four years ago. And, and, it's, and it's, it's great because I'm the mom who I wanted to be, the mom that's more loving and caring and more present, even though I still struggle and there's difficult days because it's part of being a parent and sure. just being a human being. Um, but so I, I, I just decided that I really wanted to inspire other parents. And I niche down to moms because um, 
um, especially when you start, you do need to niche down at some point to kind of get to people. Um, but it's really irrelevant to any parent. Um, that is wonderful. And I like how you were able to kind of navigate through all of that and through your discovery and with being a mom, a dedicated mom to your child that you discovered this. So for those who don't know, or our listeners are and viewers, the uh, transformations or the, the guides that you put into place for your clients is that's kind of what the method of the Montessori. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, you are. So this is the more, you know, the, the easiest thing to put in place is that sort of like strat strategy at home. And then the deeper work is that sort of like working on yourself. And so putting in place um, a system at home, that's, that's what I talk about, a system is simply having, especially for early, for um, young children. And that's where you can see the biggest impact also. That's where you're going to set all the, the future patterns and the characteristics of the, the person. So that's why it's so important to start young. Um, and so one of the big things that I go through is um, how much stuff is there at home because too much stuff is overwhelming, not only for us, but our children. And it actually goes against their development um, because they need a certain kind of order. And then it's also much more difficult to help them and guide them, put things back because when there's so much in the end of the day, uh, I see a lot of mom actually wanting to take an hour or 30 minutes to just put and tidy everything. But after a long day, the child's tired and they mostly, you know, they're, they don't want to. And, and, and we also as, as parents are tired at the end of the day. So we don't necessarily want to do that. Whereas if you have a system where everything is set at a certain place, and this is where Montessori comes into play because um, they're really big into having an order so that the child can feel confident of knowing where things go and they can actually then put things back. So for example, um, you know, if you have a little area in the living room that's set for the, the child's uh, toys to have them so that you could have rotations so that there's not too much at once and um, there are specific toys per place or activities per spot on wherever that area is in the living room so that the child doesn't have to get everything out in a big box to get to one toy and then they have to put everything back. And so that is huge because most people don't know this, this, this phase in childhood, this sensitive period, what, what it's called. Um, so a sensitive period is a period during um, which the, the child actually learns a skill really, really easily and without eff much effort, and they actually um, enjoy that part. And uh, order is one of them. And so having things in a specific place, having also a somewhat orderly home, it doesn't have to be super neat and tidy, um, really helps them actually in their own development as they go through that, that phase and as they build their own sense of order inside of them. This really helps them in, to build that sense of order inside and to actually get confidence and then get confident into the world. And so that's why I'm really big into, you know, decluttering, uh, looking at what the child's really interested in, and then rotating the toys um, to actually create this more harmonious living because then we end up with less stuff uh, and we can actually have a home that's not just overwhelmed with all the toys of our children. Right. And I, I would imagine, and, and that's a great method. And as I'm thinking, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, well, how can I apply some of those methods in my household? Right. And obviously with the pandemic, moms and dads are at home with their children. So I am thinking that the Montessori would also be a great way because my gosh, moms and dads that are home working full time and trying to, um, you know, do the schooling with their children. There's just so much going on for them. And the better organized that you are, the better declutter that you are. And that would be a great thing to kind of apply to anyone, not specifically just a mom and dad, but what better way for a mom and dad than to implement these changes. Now, what I want to ask is, 
what is one tip that you can maybe suggest to the parents that are home right now that maybe are feeling a little overwhelmed? They're teaching their children online and they're just going in one direction and another. Maybe the internet went down. Maybe they have to help their child get online. What is maybe one or two suggestions or even more that you could, you know, tips for our viewers out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a really good question because I guess a lot of parents are in, put in situations that they never thought they would. Um, and this being home and having the kid at home or kids at home and having to homeschool them, which they weren't doing and then having to work too. That's why, first of all, putting into place what I talked about is incredibly helpful because children that way, when there's not too much stuff, when, when things are a bit more organized, um, they, they learn more easily to actually play independently and to do tasks independently. And so by, and, and that specifically works for young children because later on things are a bit different uh, in the way you would set up the home, obviously, and in the way you would guide children. Um, but for younger ones, um, it, it's really about building their confidence building their autonomy and so in that way that's why you want to declutter and, and have all, all what we talked about so that they can actually feel empowered and feel responsible about what they're doing and about putting things back and about actually being part of the home environment which then is going to be so much easier into working with them because they're going to feel so it's not like building a lot of adults i mean you are in the future but it's it's just Toddlers also and young children love to feel um, useful at the early stage. And so if you encourage that later on, it's so much easier to work with them. So this is this is the first thing that really comes to mind, which kind of goes back again to what we talked about before. And then the second big piece um, would be to allow yourself, the parent who feels overwhelmed, to feel overwhelmed because we often tend to go into this driving mode and especially moms go a lot because they've got a lot on their plate. They've got lots of to-do lists and they're really, they're kind of like the household managers. And unfortunately they are managers instead of having people on their team who actually really work together. Um, and so we tend to like really fight those emotions that we don't want to feel and overwhelm, sadness, all those feeling like we're the only one doing things, we get to this point where we just like we try to control everything instead of slowing down and letting ourselves just feel, come back to the body and actually feel what's there. Because when we allow ourselves to feel those emotions, then those certain things that we have to do are gonna get done much more easily because they're gonna be less resistance from others, less resistance from our kids. When we release those certain emotions, when we actually work on ourselves, um, it, it transfers directly onto even the partners, even the husband or the wife, you know, if there's a dad listening. So it's really about allowing ourselves because it's hard and we can't make it perfect. We, we, can't, we can't be the homeschooling mom, the working mom, the cooking mom and everything all perfectly every single day. And it's okay right. sometimes to feel like we're, we're screwing things up but allowing ourselves to really feel that is important because otherwise we're going to go into overdrive and we forget about ourselves. And you bring up a really important point there. We go into overdrive because I imagine, especially for the stressed out, busy, busy mom, busy dad, that when you're in that moment where you're saying to, when they feel that overwhelm and they acknowledge how they're feeling sometimes. And I know as a parent, you know, my son will be 34. That was a long time ago, but I'm sure there were some times when I was like, ah, you know, and maybe just blurt something out and, oh my gosh, you know, why did I say that? So I think that's really an important point to acknowledge how they, how they feel a lot of times when for instance, when I feel stress, what I'll do is maybe put my timer on for, I don't know, two minutes and then listen to music and just kind of get it in the moment where I'm allowing myself to feel, acknowledge it, timer goes off. Okay, boom, I'm done. 
and then I move forward. So I love the tips and practices that you're using for this effect that can really help anyone feeling that stress of wherever they are in their journey. And everyone, I do apologize for the chirping bird and can't wait till I move them to the other side of the house, which will be when it gets a little warmer. But, um, you know, it, and that's kind of a funny sidebar story, but uh, we'll get to that later. And I also think too, that during that sensitive period, the order in which things happen, when you start to train your brain, I believe for the repetitive things that we do on a daily basis, that like you said, that's also a huge benefit for the child because they feel involved. They're, you know, they're proud of themselves that, hey, you know, I remember to put my toy away or I remember where this goes. Um, these are wonderful ideas. And, and it's more natural than what we think, you know, because um, I've seen a lot of moms just think that, you know, kids are messy and they're not like, they're, you know, it's, it's not that they're naturally going to put things away, but when they're guided, they will. And this is actually incredible to see children just naturally put things away when they're done and not thrive in a mess. And, 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 and I've seen this misunderstanding that if children put things away or if, you know, there's not, not such a mess that they're not being a child. Where it's like it, it's it's not you know it's not going against childhood to just guide children obviously there is a proper way to do it which you're respectful and you're gentle you know as as much as you can but um it's also a way of respecting childhood it's also a way of respecting your child uh, because later on it's going to be so much easier for them because they're going to have this interior structure and they're going to be able to just live with other people uh, and just, you know, you will have less likely a, likely a, a nagging teenager who doesn't want to put things away, etc. And, and it just puts more responsibility onto that being that, you know, you're educating. Um, but I also wanted to come back to what you said, you take two minutes, you know, for, you know, you have your timer and, and, and that's just, that's amazing because it doesn't have to be long. And often we think we need, you know, just like, I don't know, yoga sessions every morning for 45 minutes, an hour, where it doesn't have to be that way, especially when we're really busy. We can just take two minutes in the bathroom before a toddler finds us, for example, just to kind of slow down, to feel, to reconnect with ourselves. And then we're going to be so much more present and better for them if we do that throughout the day. But also another tip that I really want to talk about is communication. Um, because children and 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 everyone but children really feel things on a much deeper level and they're much more sensitive than we are because we've had time to put to build walls and you know to protect ourselves whereas children are very very new to this world and so when we feel something they, they feel it and often there are certain kinds of reactions that we tend to think you know it's because they're feeling this way but very often they're feeling that way because of us if we're in you know if we're at home if we're in this this kind of setting um if we're feeling and it's not just about stress if it's about you know if we're feeling sad if we're feeling angry if we're feeling anything like that and we're not communicating honestly with them you know just saying yeah mama feels this way um or just just being honest when they ask you questions it's like you're hiding something from them and then you expect them to deal with this sort of tension that they feel from you, whereas they can't. And even for us older um, um, people, we, we just have a tendency to get nervous or to get a bit frustrated when you're starting to feel something off from a person, from your partner. You know, we, we tend to react that way. So it's very important to talk about how we're feeling, not putting our emotions onto our children and making them feel bad about emotions if they did something but really about owning our the way we feel and just that way you're actually really um supporting their own feelings and the way they see things and and their intuition their gut feelings of thinking hmm i, I feel like mom is feeling sad you know and then often 
parents may be, no, I'm okay. You know, whereas inside you are actually feeling something. Maybe it's not sadness. Maybe you don't know. But acknowledging the fact that, yes, you're feeling something is actually supporting your child's growth too and um, emotional intelligence as well. I think you just hit the nail on the head, supporting their emotional intelligence. All of those different things combined together can really shape or not shape their future development to maybe handle things in their lives that pop up when they're teenagers, when they're adults. Exactly. Good, good point. Oh my gosh, so much great information. So I want to ask you another question. How good is the chocolate in Switzerland? <laughs> you are talking to a girl who wants to quit chocolate. <laughs> I just oh. had to. I'm like, I got yeah, it. I understand. Well, I'm going to tell you it's pretty good. <laughs> Dark it's chocolate. really good. It's really good. But you know, it's really funny because Switzerland is known for uh, black chocolate. Belgium is known for um, uh, milk chocolate. And I can't remember which other country is like the other. If it's the white, you know, I can't remember. But it is good. And every time I remember going, you know, because I'm originally from Serbia. And so I would every summer we go visit my grandparents in Serbia and I would buy chocolate there. And I would just be so disappointed because my standard which was pretty high. <laughs> I imagine. And for our guests to get a hold of you, um, do you have a website? Can you give us some information on how they would contact with you? So I mostly am on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I've actually taken my, my website down. So I'm under Sunshine Reconnect, or um, I also have a Facebook group, group which is mainly for moms uh, who have babies or toddlers, uh, which is called Gent um, Gentle Parenting with Montessori, a group for overwhelmed moms. Um, and so this is where mainly I am. And if anyone wants to also shoot me a DM on Facebook, on their healing and bass track, I'm also, I'm also there. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for that information. And um, obviously, it is, um, I think it's about 920 here. So it's late in the afternoon for you, I think after two, correct? After two? Yes, it's 220 here. Yeah. And you were saying before we, um, before we came on live that your Switzerland's time change doesn't happen for another week or so? Yeah, I think it's this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we're not on the same, I don't know why. And, and Europe wasn't supposed to be changing anymore this year. But uh, apparently because of COVID and everything, they didn't get to discuss that. So we're going to continue to kind of screw up our circadian rhythm. But <laughs> that, that's a pity. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know I'll, that a lot of parents, I'm sure, are sleep depriving. And, and I can't even imagine just, you just know. Just this one hour means, you know, for young children. It's ridiculous. Right, right. It throws everybody off. Well, mm -hmm. Alina, I cannot thank you enough for being on the Two Sisters podcast today. And I know Carol Sue will be watching this at some point today. And we just really appreciate your taking the time to reach out to us. You've provided some amazing information, not only for the, the parents that are out there, but for probably for everybody else that may be listening to this staying organized, acknowledging yourself, feeling what you need to feel to move forward. Awesome. I want to thank you so much. And I hope you'll be able to come on again soon. We so okay. enjoyed having you on today. Well, thank you. It was, it was a pleasure talking with you today. Well, wonderful. Thank you. So everyone, you've heard how to get in contact with Helena. If you need further information, you can always reach out to her. And like she said, send her a direct message through Facebook. My name is Janice minus one with Carol Sue, but we are both here in spirit. Wellness Diva 4.0 and Lady Canna, now a published author. We wish you the best of Thursdays and the two sisters will be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for fantabulous Friday. And I think we have some shenanigans in order. So bye, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.